Many Chozo have gone beyond now, and this is a mercy. Those of us who remain suffer in dimensional flux, drifting helplessly across time and space, guided by unseen and inexorable currents. The Chozo who cling to sanity fight the tide, but our minds are weakening, so we will all be like the turned. Chozo who have been corrupted by the great poison. The turns still hold to their Chozo form, but their minds are black with fell intentions. Gone is their respect for life. They honor only destruction and seek to disrupt the artifacts holding the great poison at bay. All life taunts them, and they do not rest. Before long, they will be all that remain of the Chozo here. Welcome back to Metroid Prime, my perfect let's play. It's not perfect in the way that we're getting every item and every scan, but it's perfect in the comedic standpoint. And this is my personal opinion. Oh, you may disagree, but I do decree. We'll have some funny moments along the way. So stay tuned. And if you don't know my name, it's Diogen Z. You may be new. That happens on occasion. Ha, huh, don't even care about that fire. What we're doing today is a bit of backtracking and also checking out some of the Magmore Caverns we've not seen before. These pesky flying annoyances are here to greet us on our journeys too. You're gonna start noticing them pop up into areas that we've backtracked to in the past and we'll have to do it again for some specific items that we missed or weren't able to get before because we didn't have the proper suit upgrades. Oh, not in the lava! But, yeah, that's that's a thing of this game. That's, that's definitely something that you have to be aware of, is the enemies are dynamic. They're not going to stay... Frickin' mandible muncher of my balls. Hey, get your mouth off my ball. That's disgusting. You don't know where I've been rolling around. Hell, for all you know, I could have been rolling around in the sewers. And there you are. Putting your big fat mandibles on my bollicles, my testicles, And I just looked around. I could have swore there was a way that we could lower that lava, but right now I don't know how you do that. So <laughs> we're not, not going to worry about that right now. But we may in another episode. I don't know. What I do know is we need to start heading back to the Talon overworld. Start tracking some other suit upgrades. I'm just not sure where you go from Thardas. I, I'm just going to be completely honest with you here because what does it pay to lie to the audience, really? Uh, you can pretty much tell by how we're going to go about this episode that I'm not too certain where we're going. But in the process, I do intend to get some missile upgrades that we missed. Again, it's not a requirement of this game to get any of the missile upgrades. It can be beaten perfectly with only the missiles you have. Well... That's actually, that's a very, that's a subjective kind of opinion because if you only have five missiles the entire game, things are going to be a bit difficult for you. And I'm sure you could beat the final boss, but it's going to take a damn while. And man, if, if you're good at evading, good, <laughs> good luck, go for it. But if not, you're going to need some firepower to make sure you can smite that thing before it smacks you down into the ground with the rest of the dead things. The rest of the dead Chozo that line the Talon 4 surface. I'm sure this entire planet at this point is fertilized with the remains of the Talon, or of the Talon, of the Chozo! The creature's not originally from Talon, but uh, made their way here. And I'm, I'm a bit rusty on my Metroid lore as far as it comes with the original games. But I thought that the Chozo were on planet Zebits. And even if my lore is not too good in knowing where the Chozo decided to take residency, I can tell you they were there just based on their statuary. Yeah, a, a log that was in this game that gave you a bit of background story on those statues you had to fight that you thought, oh cool, I'm getting a suit upgrade, getting a missile power up. Nope, you're fighting a freaking Chozo statue that you thought was inanimate that you thought was like a pile of rocks and that wouldn't be any trouble to you on your journeys. But just like Thardus, it awakes from a 
non-existent slumber. It reanimates something that was never animated before. Oh man, how awesome would that have been if I dropped that freaking rock on that dragon fire monster's face? Just cracked its neck. It's like, I'm a fire in my... <laughs> oh, my neck! <sighs> oh, my scapula. I don't even know what a scapula is. I will, I will tell you that. That is a result of the Jimmy... Jimi Hendrix experience. <laughs> no, it's the Jimmy Neutron experience and, and watching that show and Carl Weezer saying scapula. Oh, my scapula. I don't even know if that's a real human body part. But we can be assured from uh, game theory that uh, it is not... It is not anything that would hurt Samus to go into that morph ball. She would not be rupturing her scapula. Yeah, that's really a, a series I recommend everyone check out if you're into laughter and if you're into learning and video games. Which I would probably say you are. All three of those things, all the above. Probably an intelligent, comedic, loving gamer if you're on this channel. Because that's just kind of the way it goes. Not that I try to teach and inform my viewers every time, but Game Theory is a great show for that. And it takes so many cool, funny perspectives. I just watched a video from them that talked about Portal and what the weighted companion cube is really weighted with. It's really wicked and creepy when you think about it. But I won't ruin it for you. Go check out the video. Anyway, on this video, yeah, still lost. Uh, I love this place, though. This little area where you hop up those pillars. It's one of my favorite places. I think it's the music shift that does it for me. I mean, I, I love the Talon overworld overall, and it would be probably my favorite part of this game because it's all jungle-esque and, you know, very atmospheric. We got the rainstorms going on that never stop, but, ah, who cares? Weather is a thing that only happens in certain games with changing tides, but in this game, it's consistently the same in every region you go to. You can count on it snowing in Fendrana Drifts, for example, just as you can expect raining magma from Magmore Caverns. Kinda. Well, I wouldn't say magma, but they do have those freaking flamethrower spigots. Who decided to have a freaking sprinkler system not spray any sort of useful liquid that would put out fires, but no! Oh, we're gonna put ceiling based flamethrowers this way we can obscure people moving through here you know I guess it makes hunting dinner a lot easier if you're the Chozo that's something I don't know if uh, Nintendo ever delved into is their diets me being a vegetarian I, I could see this being a lush and richest land to live on so long as you stayed away from the Phazon creatures and mainly lived on the Talon overworld not much for a vegetarian, for example, in the Fendrana Drifts region. But they don't say if they are cannibals or, jeez, I hope they're not cannibals, or, or meat eaters. That's much better. I would rather them be meat eaters than cannibals. Maybe that's what made them go crazy. They're blaming it all on the Phazon, but the real fact of the matter is, it's not. It's cannibalism. And there's a disease that happens when you eat, uh, I think, the brain matter of a, of a fellow human... I think it's Kuru. Kuru is the disease. And there's cannibals on islands that have that. Maybe there's a Chozo equivalent. But if they were meat eaters, they could have feasibly used those flamethrower ceiling mounts to capture their prey and cook it all at the same time. Pretty cool invention, if you ask me. But not so good for a peaceful hallway passage. Not perfection. You get my point? It sucks. I am just so glad that we're not living in an age where we have a full body suit on ourselves while we play these games to feel the pain of the player first person perspective. And we can't go here yet because we lack the proper equipment. So I am going to check the map and we will be back. So many creatures suffer beneath the blight upon the land and we Chozo are no exception. But for all of our pain, we can at least believe in the promise of the future. Unlike the apparitions that have begun to appear, entities that feel neither hope nor solace, we call these doomed souls, the turned. Taking ghostly Chozo forms, they know no reason beyond the instinctive urge to protect our lands. 
they will likely exist in limbo forever. We have come to believe that a time may never come when we can once again open the door and banish the darkness we've contained. Even so, our vigilance will forever remain. We believe that on some far off day, a savior will come and continue what we have begun. For that savior, we will leave our ancient weapons and armor. The soul who can gather them will be the entrusted one, the only being who can reverse the evil that grows here. Okay, so I'm here, right? All right, good, I see the whole map now. And I gotta get over there. How do I get over there? I don't see a door. What the? Oh, map! <laughs>